This video is about the parable of Lazarus and the links with Psalm 146, which helps to explain the parable. The parable of Lazarus is ultimately a parable about the resurrection. Towards the end of the parable, the rich man asks uh, Abraham to send Lazarus to his brethren uh, to, uh, to speak with them. But Abraham in the parable says, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So we see then that this parable is, is ultimately about the resurrection. So the story itself seems to involve life after death without the resurrection. But that's the story. But the meaning behind it is that of uh, the resurrection. And of course, other things uh, besides. So why would we want to go to Psalm 146 to look at the parable when looking at the parable of Lazarus? Well, um, according to the concordance, the word Lazarus is uh, the Hebrew, uh, or it comes from the Hebrew name Eliezer, which means whom God helps. Now in Psalm 146 and verse 5 we read, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in Yahweh his God. So we've got two words there, the word God, which is the Hebrew word El, and the word help, which is the Hebrew Ezer, and that's where the name uh, Eliezer, or uh, the New Testament form Lazarus, comes from. So there might well be links bet between the psalm uh, and the parable uh, based uh, on the uh, on the, the link between the, the meaning of the name and that verse 5. And when we look at the context in Psalm 146, we see how appropriate it is for helping us to understand the parable of Lazarus. Take these two verses which we read of um, in Psalm 146. Verse 2 says, While I live, will I praise Yahweh. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. And then verse 4 says, his breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, in that very day his thoughts perish. So there's quite a clear teaching there about the fact that when a person dies, that's it. There's no um, immortal soul which continues to live afterwards. And then when we look at some more verses in the psalm, we see how they specifically link with aspects of the parable um, of Lazarus. Take, for example, um, verse 3 of the psalm. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. Now, that's uh, what Lazarus did to start off with. At the beginning of the parable, we find him um, at the, the gate of the rich man, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. So at that stage, he was, um, to a certain extent anyway, putting his trust um, in princes and looking for help from, from man, um, but was only at the, mo uh, at the most uh, obtaining crumbs. And then in verse 7 and 8 of the, uh, the psalm, we read that God executed the judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. Yahweh looseth the prisoners, Yahweh openeth the eyes of the blind, Yahweh raiseth them that are bowed down, Yahweh loveth the righteous. And so ultimately this was true for Lazarus in the parable. In the end it was God who gave him food. Who gave him food. Um, it was God who raised him up after he had been bowed down. And then in verse 9 of the uh, psalm we read, But the way of the wicked... He turneth upside down. And of course this is what happened to the, rich, uh, to the rich man. As we read in the parable. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So we see the reversal there that happened to um, the rich man. So Psalm 146 then, uh, which actually is a psalm which seems to uh, relate to the, uh, the time of, uh, of Hezekiah as part of the historical background, um, specifically also relates to the parable of Lazarus and helps us to understand that otherwise perhaps tricky parable.